Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, let's take a look at the Rotec 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet Adapter, the RTL's A125B Ethernet Adapter. So here is the device and we can see that the branding right here is IL Crest and it has been very popular on the market for the Intel i225V as well as this Rotex RTL's A125B. So now let's unbox and see what do we have. So inside this box you have a low profile bracket or adapter and then let's see. We can see that the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter is packed inside a plastic bag. And here we have the chip and the name is actually IR Crest as well. Very good, very solid build. And right here we also have a QR code to download the rivals. Alright, not bad at all. So this is the user guys and it's just one slice of paper. We have the installation guide, the driver installation for Windows, and then some of the features of the card and we have 10, 100, 1000, 2.5 gigabit and this is what we have but actually we don't have the driver CD because we can download it from the QR code anyway. Alright, so that is all. We have the box, we have the Ethernet adapter, and a low profile bracket. So with this one, you should be good to go. And now I'm going to give a try with OpenWRT because this is my favorite topic all the time. In this video, I'm going to check it out with the Zima board and we can't install this high bracket or high profile. So we need to remove it. All right, that's it. All right, I have just switched an OpenWRT x86-64 EXC to my USB right, and now I'm going to plug it to the Zima board to put up the system and let's check it out. So this is the Zima board and right here I have the LTRs A125B Ethernet adapter connected. And for this, I have an HDMI monitor just to see what is going on on the Zima board as well as how to change the boot to the OpenWRT USB right. All right, so I'm going to connect my Ethernet cable from this adapter to my PC and we will see if it works at the first place. All right, so the Ethernet cable from my PC And then the USB right with open the URT. And lastly, the power cable. All right, very good. Let's wait for the signal. Now I need to spam the delete key to go to the BIOS. And right here, let me change the boot option. So the first boot, I want it to be a USB right, and that's it. Let's hit save and apply. All right, we have open the URT up and running. Let's wait for it. Let's see if we have any log about the Reltex RTL's A125B. Very good, we can see some message that the RTL's A169, the link is up, it is 2.5 gigabit per second and it is full duplex. Alright, so I'm not sure if you can see it from the video, but I already see it there and now we are going to the computer to check it out. 
So let's go to the network connection and then let's go and see the adapter. Very good, we have the interface up and running with a 2.5 qubit per second link speed. On the details, I have an IPv4 address already, so I assume that the OpenWRT have automatically configured the port to be a LAN port. Let's go to 192.168.1.1 and let's check it out. There is no password by default. So here we are OpenWRT running on the Zima board. This is OpenWRT 22.03 stable release. And on the network interfaces, let's see we have this one, Ethernet 1 and 2, and I assume that they are the Realtek internal network adapter. And then the Ethernet 0 is our 2.5 gigabit link speed. We can see that OpenWRT 22 stable release already have the drivers and the firmware for the Realtek RTL A125B. And we don't need to do anything to get the adapter up and running. So now I can see that the one port is Ethernet 1 and let's check it out. Alright, so this is the cable from the upstream routers and I'm going to connect it to maybe this port and I assume that this one is Ethernet 1. Not sure if it's correct or not. So just now I connect a network cable to this port but there is no message on the monitor. So I assume that this one should be Ethernet 2 where it is not properly configured. So let's go back to OpenWRT and check it out. Alright, so let's go to the one interface and change it to Ethernet 2 and do the same for this one. Save and apply. So let's see, we have the interface up and running and we should be having an IPv4 address soon and yes it is. Now I'm going to connect to the routers or the Zima board we added H and I'm going to install IPUB3. Very good, let's start the IPUB3 test server and then on my PC let's do the same test. So this time it will be IPUB3 C 192.168.1.1 and then P4s and then T20. So with the Zima board running OpenWRT, we have 2.32 gigabit per second throughput from my PC to the Zima board and it is just a LAN to LAN throughput test but anyway we are able to see that the interface is up and running by the default configuration. So let's run the test again, but this time it will be in revert mode. Unfortunately, for revert test, we only have 914 megabit per second. I'm not sure if it is something wrong. Let's give another try by running the iPod 3 normal test. We can see that with the normal iPod 3 test, we are having 2.36 gigabit per second. However, when it comes to IPUB3 test in reverse mode, we only have 900 Mbps. And let me reduce the parallel stream and let's see if we can have a higher speed. We can see that by reducing the parallel stream to a single stream, we're having 1.83 gigabit per second. So this should be something we need to figure out. Either it's something wrong with the kernel, with the driver, or with the limitation of this network adapter. And as usual, before ending the video, we will take a look at the power consumption of the Zima board before, after, and when running the network adapters with full load. Let's check it out. All right, before starting the power consumption test, I just want to clarify that this HDMI monitor is using a separate power adapter. So it doesn't take the power from the Zima board. 
And if yes, there are only the power consumption from my USB receiver for the keyboard and also the USB right for OpenWRTs and I assume that it won't take a lot of power. So for power supplies, I'm using the official power adapter from Zimabor. It is 12 volt and 3 m So totally we have 36 watt of power, all right? The power consumption of the Zima ball during idle states already have and I will not do that again. So I'm just going to boot up the system with the Rautech 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet adapter connected. Alright, so the power consumption right now is 5 watt, and we can see that OpenWRT is being boot up. The HDMI port will draw a little bit of power, if I'm not mistaken, but I believe that the number shouldn't be too much. So right now we have OpenWRT up and running, and the power consumption is 4.4 watt. And we have the 2.5 port up and running as well as the gigabit port, all right? Now I'm going to run Bmon Peace and then it will be Ethernet 0 to see the traffic of the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. Let's go and start the speed test. We are having 2.36 gigabit per second iPub3 throughput with the power consumption at 7.4 and sometimes 7.5 watt. And we can see that it is around 2.5 watt of power consumption for 2500 Mbps, which is not bad at all. So let me run the iPub3 test again and let's check it out. We are having the same 2.36 gigabit per second iPub3 throughput with the power consumption around 7.7 .7 or 7.5 watt. And we can see the same on the BMON monitor. So it is around 3 watt of power consumption for 2.5 gigabit per second throughput. All right, so during idle, it's worth 4.4, and when we're having the test, it is 7.4, so it's around 3 watts of power consumption for 2.36 gigabit per second throughput. Let me go ahead and turn on the short wave offloading and see if this helps to reduce the power consumption. All right, so let's go to the login page, then let's go to network, firewall, and I will return on short wave of loading, hit save and apply. Very good. Let's run the test for another time. With shortwave offloading enabled, we are having a stable throughput of 2.36 gigabit per second throughput with the power consumption at the same level which is 7.5 watt. So we can see that shortwave offloading doesn't reduce the power consumption but it has the throughput stable. Alright so that will be all for a quick videos about the Realtex RTL's A125B Ethernet adapter and I hope these videos will be useful for you when you want to searching or buying the same network adapter. So that will be all, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.